How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I redesigned the cooling fan bracket on my Mingda D2 to improve part quality. I've had the Mingda D2 for a little while now, and it's a really reliable printer. Overall, I'm really happy with the hardware setup on it, but the part cooling fan, for whatever reason, just didn't seem to work very well. The extruder assembly in general just feels a little bit wobbly, and so what I went ahead and did was remove the wiring harness and pulled it off to see what was going on underneath, and I was pretty surprised by what I found. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed is that the wiring harness was held in place by the metal cage that goes over the extruder. So in order to replace this, I designed a new one in SolidWorks and added a little bit of a chamfer for a bit of strength, so this can mount on to the top of the extruder gantry and hold that wiring harness in place. This was just a quick design in SolidWorks, and I printed it out using Greengate 3D Recycled PETG, and it worked really well. It's a mechanically tough material, but it feels stiff enough to hold the wiring harness in place without wiggling during printing. Once that was attached and felt secure, it was time to turn my attention to the cooling fan. The cooling setup is a little bit weird on this printer. The fan that's supposed to be cooling the heat break faces the heat break, but the back faces a solid piece of metal, and on that piece of metal is the part cooling fan which directs air downwards. There's no way for air to actually enter the part cooling fan, so I'm not really sure how it works. I don't think it pulls a lot of air in from the side, so I wanted to redesign this from scratch. If we look at a profile view of this cooling mount, we can see the problem a little bit clearer. We're trying to push air directly onto the cooling fins of the hot end, but as you can see, it really doesn't have the air aimed in that direction. In addition, the part cooling fan, which is supposed to be pushing air directly into the nozzle, is positioned right in front of this fan, so it's not letting any air through. So our goal for this mount is to remove the part cooling fan from the heat break fan and allow air to flow directly into it without any obstruction, and then relocate the part cooling fan to the front of the machine. Designing a mount that could hold both fans proved to be a little tricky, but it was a perfect use case for 3D printing, because I could design and test iterations as I went. It took about 15 iterations total before I came to this. This is the current iteration in SolidWorks, and it has room on the left for a heat break fan, and attaches directly to the gantry, and on the right a part cooling fan that directs the air directly onto the tip of the nozzle. I designed it to print flat on this back surface, so it requires very little support material and also has concentric holes where it's going to be mounted. I also added standoff tabs so when I put the part cooling fan on, I could mount it in without having to worry about it falling off. They do require a little bit of support material, but I think it's worth it to have that extra security on the printed part. I also printed the fan mount using Greengate 3D's recycled PETG, and both the fans mounted up perfectly. It worked exactly as it was designed to. The heat break fan blew cold air directly over the cooling fins of the hot end, and the part cooling fan blew cold air directly onto the part. Unfortunately, while splicing together the wires for the wiring harness, I accidentally caused a short in the part cooling fan, not realizing the cable was still plugged into the printer. This meant I had to take the printer apart to figure out where the failure had occurred, and I believe that I blew a relay out somewhere on the board. I didn't want to replace the entire board, so my clutch of a fix was just to go ahead and splice both fans together so they're both running off the terminal that goes to the heat break fan. This isn't a perfect fix, as I no longer have control over the speed of the part cooling fan, but it's better than nothing. The printer seemed to work fine with this configuration, but I wanted to do a little bit of a stress test, so I went to Prusa Printers and found the Judge Dread bust by Eastman and thought it was perfect for printing out. It was about a 12 hour print sliced in Prusa Slicer, and it seemed like a good stress test for the extruder. And I have to say, it worked pretty well. Even the steep overhangs on the model, like underneath the fingers and the chin, the printer was able to print and cool the part without any real excessive drooping. I was really impressed. I used a spool of Amazon Basics Neon Orange PLA, which is almost impossible to photograph and it's even harder to get on video, so sorry if it looks a little shiny. Overall, the model looks really good, and there aren't a whole lot of part defects, and it's what I would consider to be a pretty high quality print, even though it was printed at 0.3 millimeters. You can even read the name on his badge. So overall, I'm really happy with this cooling upgrade. There's some room for improvements in future iterations, maybe reducing the amount of support material required, and maybe readjusting where the air is hitting the part, but generally speaking, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think it's a big upgrade over the stock cooling. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or reach out on Twitter. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.